Hello everyone, I hope you're doing alright. Today we're talking about the Pyrotech PowerTech. It is a dot spec for your PowerTech. It's a lot of fun. I'm just gonna call it the Pyro because I'm a TF2 nerd and I don't want to say Pyrotech PowerTech 30 times in our game. So, brief disclaimer as usual, I'm not an expert. I'm just a nerd that plays a lot of Swole Tour and kind of knows what he's doing. But if you have any recommendations, you can add them down in the comments below and help out your fellow players. I'm sure they would appreciate it. For a tertiary stats here, we're looking at 110% accuracy in PvE, and then as little accuracy as possible in PvP. We do a lot of yellow damage in this spec, so accuracy really isn't necessary. Then for alacrity, looking at like 7.2% alacrity. Dude, but 7.2% alacrity, that should compensate for most of your lag issues. And then just dump the rest into crit, and you should be ready to rock and roll. For your tactical, we're going to take superheated fuel. We basically do all flame attacks in Pyro, and what Superheated Fuel does is it increases the critical chance of all your flame attacks by 100% every time you use your Superheated Fuel. Which means that we have 15 straight seconds of all crits all the time in Pyro, every two minutes. Uh, it's pretty darn fantastic, it's a boatload of burst damage, we love to see it. For our legendaries, we're going to take the Shot Trooper package, uh, it's going to help with our heat management a little bit, and then just give us a little bit of extra passive damage. You know how to think about it, it just kind of does what it does. Mandalorian Armaments is our next legendary here. Uh, it gives us a little extra auto cannon after we use all of our shoulder cannons. Uh, it's okay damage, but there's not a lot of other good options here. I've seen some people take the Super Commando package, but you're giving up a lot of stats for a energy shield for three seconds. If you're in like turbo ranked and you really need the survivability, you can take Super Commando, uh, but I'd rather just do damage because I'm a nerd like that. For our combat style, Power Tech benefits or has the disadvantage of having a lot of good options here. So let's talk through a couple of these. In the first row, if you want to do massive damage, you can do Primed Ignition. That's fine. The most uh, best sustained damage is going to be Heat Stroke. It's going to increase the damage of our burning effects without us really thinking about it. Open Flame is great for AoE. So pick your poison here. You're not going to go wrong either way. But if you want the most sustained damage, go with Heat Stroke. Uh, jet Charge is kind of the only option in this tree. Uh, it gives us a leap to the target, which we kind of need as a melee spec or a melee spec. Um, up the chain here, you can do Prime Rail Shot for single target. Prime Rail Shot will give you a dot on your rail shot, which we love to see. It's the best damage at the moment. You can also take Whistling Bird if you're doing a lot of AOE damage. It's also very satisfying to do. Um, so that is a complete option for you. Up the chain here, I take Chilled Retribution in PvP for the extra Carbonizes, but in PvE, you want to take Boiling Point for the extra 10% damage reduction. Uh, additionally, it's going to heal your teammates a little bit, so it's just the best in PvE, but for PvP, check that Chilled Reduction, it's just the best. Moving up the chain here, in PvE, you're going to want to take that Pyro Shield so you can fluff a little bit. In PvP, I like taking Gyroscopic Alignment Jets. It helps out with your heat management a lot, especially in PvP right now when you get rooted and stunned a whole bunch. It really helps out with your damage and your heat generation, which is very nice. Again, in this tier, you kind of have a bunch of good options. In, a in uh, PvE, you kind of want to take Hitman here for the AoE reduction. Uh, it's very, very nice. And then for PvP, I like suppressive tools. It helps root people and prevents them from, you know, getting away from us. We are a melee spec, so we don't want to be moving around as much. We prefer to keep them slowed. Moving on the chain here, I take Hydraulic Overrides. It's just the most useful to us. You can take stun if you want to. If you want to have a little bit extra survivability and, like, solo content, you can take Shield Cannon. But I find Hydros to be the most useful overall. And then finally, I take Efficient Suit here. Efficient Suit's going to give us that little bit of extra range in our grapple and our rocket cannons. Um, especially the grapple range is really nice. And then being able to use Cultal while stunned is really nice, especially in PvP. In PvE, uh, your team is going to yell at you to take Sonic Rebounders. Just do. It turns your uh, Sonic Missile into a Reflect, which we love to see. But this is what I personally run for PvP. Uh, because I'm more of a PvP nerd. But you have a bunch of options here that are available to you, which is... Uh, a lot of fun. It's really exciting. So Pyro is a dot spec. And what that means is that we use dot and or damage over time abilities to do a good chunk of our damage. Dots are pretty simple to follow. If you use it initially, it's not going to do that much damage. For example, this only did like 4k damage on the, the initial hit. However, it's going to apply this debuff that you can track over time to say, hey, my dot's still doing damage to the target. You're going to see it's slowly going to be ticking over time. Once it falls off the target, you're going to see the debuff is gone and they need to reapply your dots. We have three, well, we have four primary dots here. The first is just what we discussed before. It's Cindy Missile. It does like... 20k damage over the course of 15 seconds, so it's pretty darn nice. Um, it also gives a couple other benefits here that we'll talk about in a hot second. We also have our Scorch, which does 50,000 damage over the next 30 seconds. 
Scorch will also make the target susceptible to damage, so it's going to take a little bit more from our tech attacks here. It also will jump from target to target, so if the target dies with Scorch on it, uh, it will then jump to the next target in the area, which is very helpful if you don't want to be reapplying your Scorch over and over and over again. I mentioned before a little interaction here. Every time we use our incendiary missile, you're gonna see our rail shot's gonna to start to glow. That's because of all the utility we take. Rail shot will now become a dot every time we use our incendiary missile. So you're gonna see we have this little buff here that says prime rail shot. Now if we use our rail shot, we're going to apply this burning prime rail shot buff to the target too, which is gonna do a little bit of dot damage as well. Those are our three gener general dots. We also have one final dot here called burning. Uh, burning is pretty straightforward damage. It's just what we get from using, for example, our rapid shots or our flaming fist. A whole bunch of our abilities will apply this burning debuff to the target, so it's pretty much gonna be taking 24 seven. You don't really have to think about it. It just kind of happens as part of our rotation. So three dots we have to worry about are interior missile and scorch. And then the third dot will be applied via rail shot. And then the fourth dot, it kind of just happens on its own. But let's talk about our primary damaging abilities here. On the left-hand side of the screen, you're gonna see this little priority tree that I've set up for us. These are our three primary damaging abilities. The rest will be fillers. Rail shot is the one we need to discuss first. Rail shot does a whole bunch of damage, but it's only usable on targets that are susceptible. So for example, if you can see here, I'm clicking rail shot right now, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. It's because the target isn't vulnerable. You make the target vulnerable by CCing it or by applying a dot to it. So if you see here, we apply our Scorch to the target. We can now use our Rail Shot and boop, do a whole bunch of damage to the target. It's a pretty great ability. It also makes a very satisfying ping, which mm, chef's kiss, we love to see. Our second primary damaging ability is going to be our Searing Wave. Now Searing Wave will spread our dots. So if we have our incendiary missile on the target, it will spread our incendiary missile around to everyone else that's in the area. But Searing Wave on its own actually doesn't do that much damage. If you see here, it's only doing like 10K damage if I use it right now. Uh, boop, only 10K. It's not that impressive. However, by using abilities like Flame Burst twice in a row, I mean, hold up, stop debating Flame Burst twice in a row, or you can use your Flame Sweep as well. You're gonna be building these stacks of superheated fuel. It's gonna last for 30 seconds and it's going to essentially double the damage of our Searing Wave. It's gonna make it glow. So every time you see your Searing Wave glowing, it means it's gonna do that extra turbo damage. You can boop, walk up right to the target and do about double the damage, like 20K, which is uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty darn nice. You're gonna notice that every time you do a Searing Wave, your Immolate's gonna to start to glow. Immolate is the last of our primary damaging abilities. It does a boatload of damage. So, Immolate is just you throw a fireball at the target and it does a whole bunch of damage. For example, boop, there's a 43,000 damage. Pretty darn fantastic. When it's glowing, it's because we've used our Searing Wave. So, it's a whole bunch of damage. So, the interactions we have so far is that our Incendiary Missile makes our Rail Shot give an extra dot. If we use our Flame Burst and or Flame Sweep to build these superheated flamethrowers, that will make our Searing Wave do more damage. Using our Searing Wave will give us this little Consuming Flame as well, which makes our Immolate do more damage. When we use our Immolate, the next Flame Burst or next Flame Sweep we use is free for heat. There's a lot of interactions happening here. How many of these do you actually have to do track of, though? The answer is not many. Because the rotation we're going to use, uh, they all kind of just play into each other. So you don't have to think about like, oh, do I have the buff from my Rail Shot? Oh, do I have the buff from my Searing Wave? Oh, do I have the buff from my Immolate? If the button glows, you're ready to rock and roll. So if you're just leveling up, you're like, oh, what button should I be pushing? If it's glowing, that's probably the one you should be pushing. You don't really have to think about it too much. So those are our primary damaging abilities here. Let's talk about the rotation and then we'll talk about our filler abilities. The rotation for Pyro will go primary ability, filler, Primary ability, filler, primary ability, filler, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until the end of time. So the primary abilities in order are Scorch, then filler, then Incendiary Missile, then filler, then Rail Shot, then filler, then Searing Wave, then filler, then Immolate, then filler. Repeat, 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 repeat. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be applying these damaging abilities in order so that way they all give their buffs into each other and then just repeat, 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 repeat. So for right now, we're only gonna fill with rapid shots, all right? So let's 
practice just by walking down this little tree over and over and over again. So, you're going to start with scorch, then filler, then incendiary missile, then filler. It's now glowing rail shot. Great, love to see it. Then filler. Now searing wave, then filler, then immolate, then filler. Duke is very excited about this. Duke is very excited about this pyrotech rotation. Now you're going to notice here that Scorch is going to stay on the target for twice as long. That's kind of a problem. We don't want to be just auto reapplying our Scorch every time we do this rotation. So what we're going to do instead is that we're going to alternate between applying Scorch and not applying Scorch. So the first block we'll go through, we'll apply Scorch, and then we'll go back through again. And when, when we would have used a Scorch before, we're just going to use a filler. So that means that first time, Scorch, filler, emulate, or uh, incendiary missile, filler, rail shot, filler, steering wave, filler, emulate, filler. And then when we come back around to it, Scorch will still be on the target. So we're just going to use another fill ability during Scorch, then filler, incendiary missile, filler, rail shot, filler, incendiary device, filler, emulate, filler, blah, 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 blah. So anytime you need to apply Scorch, apply Scorch. When you don't need to apply Scorch, just use a filler ability. So let's practice by using just rail, rapid shots as our filler ability. So, Scorch, filler, incendiary missile, filler, rail shot, filler, walk down the list, searing wave, filler, immolate, filler. Scorch is on the target, so we're gonna use this as a filler, and filler, then incendiary missile, and filler, then rail shot, and filler, and searing wave, then filler then immolate, then filler. Scorch is not on the target, so we need to apply a scorch. Then filler, then incendiary missile, then filler. Then rail shot, then filler. Then searing wave, then filler. Then immolate, then filler. Scorch is on the target, so filler, then filler. Then incendiary missile, then filler. Then rail shot, then filler. Then searing wave, then fill it. If you can set up this little tree on your bar and just walk through it over and over and over again, you'll be able to play Pyrotech perfectly fine. Let's talk about those filler abilities now. If you've played any Pyrotech, you know that this spec runs out of heat very, very, very quickly. That's because you're not properly using your filler abilities. Now there is like a 20 plus GCD rotation that I could teach you to min max when to use your heat and when not to. I'll link that in the, uh, in the comments below. So if you want to memorize that massive rotation, you can. The dirty secret is you don't really have to. I'd rather you understand the basics of this little five button rotation than try to memorize 20 abilities rack to back to back to back to back and then be freaking out when you lose your place. You don't have to memorize it. Know the basics of this and you'll do just fine damage. If you want to crank out that extra 5% damage of knowing the exact ability to be pressing next, fine. You totally don't have to though. Not for any form of content, unless you want to be top of the DPS parse meters. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about our filler abilities. We have three filler abilities. The most important is our Flaming Fist. Flaming Fist does a whole bunch of damage to the target. It's a melee ability. Boop. Whole bunch of damage right away. It's a very, very nice ability. It's also going to give the next rail shot to be an auto crit. So we want to make sure that we're using our flaming fist as our most important filler ability. The second most important filler ability is our flame burst. Flame burst will apply our burning to the target. It's just a nice little extra bit of damage. It's also what gives us these stacks of searing wave throughout our rotation. Now, those are the two most important filler abilities is flaming fist and flame burst. But there is one rule that overrides all those abilities. If your heat is over 35%, you will use rapid shots as a filler ability. I want you to hold your hand up right now and swear to me, Biggs, if my heat is over 35%, I will use rapid shots as a filler ability. Because if you don't, you're going to completely destroy your heat. You're gonna do no damage for a very long amount of time. Because how heat works in this spec is that it, as your heat bar grows, your heat regenerates slower. So you can see here, we're using a whole bunch of flame bursts in a row, which is fine until we get to the point where we hit to like, uh-oh, 60% heat, uh-oh, 70% heat, 
uh-oh, we're reaching dangerous levels. Now you're gonna sit here for 37 years and do absolutely no damage. You're gonna sit here spamming rapid shots for like 20 abilities in a row. It's not a fun time. If you use anything other than rapid shots at 35% health where you're still learning the spec, I will come to your house and I will find you and I will cry in your face. You're gonna have to deal with that in your own home and explain that to your parents, all right? Please don't do it. So, when heat is over 35%, Use rapid shots as your filler ability. So here's how that's gonna look during the actual rotation here. So we're gonna start off with Scorch, and then Filler, and then Incendiary Missile, and now Flame Burst. Now Rail Shot, then Flame Burst. Now Searing Wave. I'm over 35% heat, rapid shots is filler, immolate. I'm over 35% heat, that's fine. There is a small interaction here that's the exception to the, the rapid shot rule. Uh, immolate will make our next flame burst free. So if you're over 35% hurt health or uh, heat and your flame burst is glowing, it's fine to hit it. Just know that you're into the danger zone. All right, let's go back through it. So Scorch, Filler, Incendiary Missile, Filler, Rail Shot, Filler, Searing Wave, Filler, Immolate, Filler, Scorch on the target, so Filler, and then Filler, and now, Syndrome Missile, Filler. Rail Shot, I'm over 35% health, so I'm gonna Rapid Shots. Searing Wave, I'm over 35%, Immolate, Filler. Scorch Fallen Off, so Scorch, Filler. Incendiary, Filler. Rail Shot, Filler. Searing Wave, Filler. Immolate, Filler. Scorch is on a target, so Filler, then Filler. If you can nail this little rotation, you will do plenty of damage as your pyrotech. You're gonna do a whole bunch of damage actually because it is a turbo burst spec. Let's talk about a few other abilities here. The first is going to be our explosive fuel. Explosive fuel is going to give you 100% crit for 15 seconds. So what that means is you have, if you have all your dots on the target, Nuke is gonna lick me and lick me and lick me. I'd love to see that. If you have all the dots on the target, all the dots on the target, we're going to apply our dots, 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 and then use our superheated fuel. You can do, for example, a superheated crit, and then 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 crit. It's a boatload of damage. It's one of the most dangerous burst windows in the entire game. It's a whole lot of damage. If you need to do a whole bunch of damage really quickly, spam that explosive fuel. Additionally, we have our shoulder cannon. Shoulder cannon will load four missiles over a short period of time. Once uh, these are loaded, you can actually start hitting them. Um, it does a moderate amount of damage and it's off the global cooldown. So what that means is that as you're using your other abilities, you could be spamming your shoulder cannon instead. You don't have to wait for it to come off cooldown. And then once we are done with our missiles, uh, we will get our stacks of auto cannon and then be doing free damage to the target throughout the next 60 seconds, which is very, very nice. We want to be stacking our shoulder cannon with our explosive fuel, if at all possible. They line up very well and it's free damage. Love to see it. Love to see it. Furthermore, in our DCDs here, defensive cooldowns, we have our energy shield, which just increases our damage reduction by 15 or 25% for the next 15 seconds. Pretty darn nice. We have our thermal year yield, uh, which will increase your armor rating by 40% for a stack and will increase the damage done by 2% for a stack. Uh, but when you're attacked, you'll actually build an additional stack of armor yield. Uh, and so what that means is that we can stack this up to like 10% extra damage and then 400% extra armor. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, a whole bunch of extra armor. It's, it's great, we'd love to see it. It's a nice little uh, DCD uh, that lasts up to 30 seconds. Duke is gonna fall off my legs now. Cool, love to see it. We also have a Cult of Overload here. Cult of Overload will rapidly heal us up to 35% health. It's also going to uh, increase or, or decrease our damage taken. And then every time you're attacked, the cooldown of Cult of Overload will be decreased by six seconds. So you can get Cult of Overloads pretty quickly, especially in like PVP situations. It's pretty darn great. We also have an inbuilt CC here. That stands for crowd control and or a stun in the form of carbonize. Carbonize will freeze all enemies within eight meters or up to eight enemies within eight meters. It's a great CC and you get it back pretty quickly. So if you're in PVP, spam it often. It's kind of all I had to say about pyrotech. Again, if you build this little tree and then just fill with rocket or uh, flaming fist and then flame burst and then 
rapid shots when you're over 35% heat. If you don't know how to see your uh, your heat percentages, if you go into your interface editor and then click on your player frame, you can come down here to this little show information text, click that on and you'll be able to see percentages for how much your heat is actually at. So that way you're not guessing. But yeah, if you can come here to the dummy, apply all your dots to the target, get rocking and rolling, and then just do a whole bunch of damage right away, you should be ready to rock and roll. If you're going into a fight, you can obviously pre-cast two flame sweeps to get the extra damage on your searing wave. But other than that, that's kind of all you have to know. It does a whole bunch of damage. For your opener, let's talk about openers real quickly. I'm sorry, this is kind of all over the place here. For your opener, you kind of want to open with Scorch and then into Incendiary Missile and then Flaming Fist for the auto crit and then rail shot, and then right back into our rotation here of Searing Wave, and filler, and immolate, and filler, and then one filler, two filler, three filler, and then get back on with your life. Uh, getting back into this rotation, you should be good to go. You can spend all of your offensive cooldowns here in the opener, that's totally fine. If you do botch your heat, like I'm currently doing right now, we have our vent heat ability. This will uh, eliminate the heat cost of our next ability. So if I smash this, the next ability will do no heat, and then it'll vent 50 heat over the next 50 seconds, or the next 30 seconds. So it's a nice little ability if you run into trouble. You can be a little greedier if you have uh, your vent heat up. So if you really want to be pushing things to the limit, you can like spam a bunch of flame bursts in a row and then use your vent heat. Just know that if you mess it up after there, you're in for a bad time. I think that's all I have. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I hope this was helpful to you. Feel free to build this tree for yourself and you should be ready to rock and roll. That's kind of all I have. You know. Subscribe if you want to, like the video, share with your friends, or don't, you know, it's a free country, do what you want. I don't have a uh, smooth transition for this, other than to say thank you, goodbye.